Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I have been extremely busy as of late, taking care of some personal business and some personal business it be. So that means it's none of your business. Anyway, while I speak to you, I'm speaking to you to let you know because there are certain people who have tried to sue judges. Um, ladies and gentlemen, judges have what's known as, uh, they, they call it this, there is no such thing, but this is what they call it, absolute judicial immunity. Now they can't have absolute judicial immunity because judges receive their authority and power from the people. So because they receive their authority and power from the people, they don't have absolute immunity because that would mean that they're sovereign. See, the sovereign has absolute immunity. You, you can't sue the sovereign. Not without the sovereign's permission. That's called sovereign immunity. Well, the courts, many of you don't understand because you're not getting it. The judicial power comes from the people. It doesn't come from the court. The people extended the power to the courts. So they cannot act beyond that power. We're going to talk about that in a second. And I'm going to show you how that is proved by common understanding of the courts. However, because some idiots on a particular court known as Supreme Court in several cases have spoke as to a judge immunity. Why? Because they needed protection. Stomp is one of the cases, ladies and gentlemen. This case right here, Stomp. Stomp the yard! Anyway, Stomp, 1978. Stomp case, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the cases where the Supreme Court made such a decision. Now, that's William Rehnquist. William Rehnquist did a lot of, pay attention, a lot of decisions. I actually have respect for him. A lot of decisions that went contrary to the law. No political official has absolute immunity. They have to act and operate within the scope of their job and the scope of their jurisdiction. Do you know one thing a judge cannot do? Anybody? Anybody? Well, they cannot jump off a tall building in a single bound. Yes, they can. Well, well, they can't. They can't run faster than a locomotive. Yes, they can. Well, show me. No, I ain't gotta show you nothing. You keep saying what they can't do, but you're not giving me no proof. And that's exactly what they're gonna say to you, ladies and gentlemen. You know one thing a judge cannot do. A judge cannot violate your rights, and they cannot actively, intentionally, and knowingly violate your secured rights. See, not not those privileges that they extend to you. No, we're talking about your secured rights. I have a person where he went to court and the judge said they were entering a plea on his behalf. You know what? Hold on. Watch this. We're going to duplicate this. And then watch what I put in here after I get my voice recognition. A judge cannot act as counsel for the defendant. Well, because if a judge is entering a plea on someone's behalf, that means they have power of attorney. Oh, I know, I know, many of you never thought of it like that. Every time a judge enters a plea on someone's behalf, there is no law saying that you have to enter a plea. There is a so-called presumption of innocence. So if you have a presumption of innocence, you don't have to enter nobody's plea. By the way, entering the plea means that you're submitting to the court's jurisdiction. That's why they do that. There is no law saying that you have to enter a plea. A trial judge cannot be expected to act as both the judge and counsel or advisor to a defendant who refuses the assistance of counsel. See, a judge cannot act as his attorney, even if he's pro se. And in most cases, when they're asking them how they plead, there is no attorney present. Judge cannot, much as he might desire, insist that a defendant obtain counsel or accepts appointment of counsel. But they do it all the time. All the time! Simply put, the court is not permitted to act as counsel for either party. But how come they do this? Because nobody calls them on it. So I'm going to give you all something. Would you like to get something? I would love to get something. Well, just stand there and I'll send somebody over to give you a Get Swift kit. I, I, no, I'm kidding. No, I'm not. Ladies and gentlemen, let me give you something. 
if you want to get a judge's attention, then learn what judicial notice is and put the facts on the record. Now, you might think the facts are whatever you think they are. No, those are not facts. You have to put the law, the actual law on the record. The laws you didn't know exist, man, those principles that are embedded in those case laws, that's what you want. Just like I told you, that's why I put together the congressional record, the actual act of Congress, the presidential proclamation, and the act known as the Federal Reserve Act amended March 9, 1933. That's your whole record. That's your proof. That's your, I'm putting the court on judicial notice as to what the law is. And you put that on the record. And you tell them, here's a congressional record showing the intent of Congress. Here's the actual act of Congress as embedded within the congressional record where they're explaining exactly what it means. And then here's the presidential proclamation which Congress said they were authorizing and maintaining. So it wasn't supposed to end in no four days because Congress maintained it. They supported it. They said, hey, you need a lift. And then finally, we put the act of Congress itself talking about the emergency for the economic relief. That's what we're doing. So those are the facts. They're indisputable facts indisputable indisputable they're indisputable facts it's just the way it is ladies and gentlemen that's why you put judicial knowledge judicial knowledge are facts that are indisputable nobody can argue them that way you put that on the record you ain't gotta argue with nobody see told you i was gonna give you something now look i need to show y'all let me show you something i need to show you something Okay, we ain't going to show you this because we just talked about this. It is well settled that a judge is completely, completely, completely immune. Uh-oh. Hold on now. Don't y'all go by that. Many people would have stopped watching the video right about now because they wouldn't have gotten this. Ladies and gentlemen, only judicial acts, get out of here, performed in clear absence of all jurisdiction. Ladies and gentlemen, the judge has no authority to violate your rights absolutely none there is no delegation of authority and that's one of your judicial facts that's one of your judicial facts that you put on the record there is no delegation of authority for any judicial officer to violate a single secured right of a single person on this planet let alone in the united states that's a judicial fact they cannot get around that and if you have evidence not just your word for instance they held me for two and a half years, and then four years in Puerto Rico, without having a right to do so. There was no violation of any law. They were just pissed off at me, because yeah, I have a habit of doing that to people. And so now I'm going after them. Ladies and gentlemen, I do need to tell you that I am redoing something. I'm redoing the judicial complaint with this angle be less pages probably be like three pages for your judicial complaint because you'll do the attachments but it'll say what it needs to say but remember when a judge acts in clear absence not just one case let's read this one a judges they enjoy judicial immunity absolute from judicial acts from their judicial acts provided such acts are not done in a clear absence of all jurisdiction if it's not a delegation of authority, it's not a judicial act because they can only act as prescribed in law. Well, some of them are acting administratively, and that's why there are administrative rules that they must follow. But remember, nothing that they do can be without the approval of the people. And you see, they keep, t they keep quoting stump. They, that stump, 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 stump. See, stump again. Why? Because that's where the Supreme Court says it has to be an absence of all jurisdiction. Ladies and gentlemen, if they lack one jurisdiction, hold on now, pay attention, which is what I, you need to explain this to yourselves. They don't have the right to violate your rights, your secured rights. There is no law. They have no law protecting them for violating your secured rights. You cannot do a 1983 that's a civil suit. They're protected by judicial immunity from all civil suits. 
you must charge them criminally first. You don't file a complaint administratively because that's a civil complaint. You don't file a judicial misconduct complaint because that's an administrative civil proceeding. They're immune. Can't do that. So stop it. Stop filing judicial. I, I need to file my judicial um, complaint against the officer with the judicial review board. Please, that's their own peers. Okay, you cannot do it. That's why you don't win, people. It's a civil action. They're immune from all civil actions. You must charge them criminally. Well, the attorney general ain't gonna do nothing. That's why you gotta do a QTAM, like somebody's getting ready to do against these judges in this point right here. Yes, 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 I'm putting myself out there because I'm tired, tired. Dealing too much with these judges smiling as they do me wrong. So I want them, I want to give them something to smile about. Last laugh, last laugh, last first, last laugh. Okay, I want to give them something to smile about. That whole, that's right, I said hoe, garden tool. Ada Delgado Colon in Puerto Rico. You guys have no idea how much of a cow that slut is I'm not just calling her that because I just want to call her names I'm calling her that because that's her lifestyle if you don't believe me do your research on her see how she made it to the presiding judge's seat she's not the presiding judge anymore I don't believe but she was for a moment why anybody would want to lay with that I don't know sorry it's just the way it is sorry you got to have some type of taste you can't just put a bag all right, all right, I'm sorry. Anyway, then you have this whole uh, Plata, Palata, whatever that stupid cow's name here in California who ignored everything. You see, I challenged everything from the very beginning. Jurisdiction, everything. I didn't enter nobody's plea. I ain't got time to be entering nobody's plea. Ladies and gentlemen, Object to the stenographer from this point on. Tell them, no, that's one of your officers. That, that person can't do nothing for me or the public. We didn't ask for that. No, I want this meeting recorded. I want to see when you act out of your capacity, when you act outside of your judicial capacity, when you violate your oath of office, you're acting in all excess of your jurisdiction, which makes you liable. And I need to document your liability, so I need proof. I'm recording this meeting. Feel free to record. I recorded them. Why do you think they seized my computer? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, over the weekend, I'm going to try to look for the audio recording of... <laughs> I'm sorry. It's funny to me. The California Department of Corrections called me the other day. The accounting department. I'll, I'll tell them who it is. The accounting department called me and said, We just received this in the mail. What you receive in the mail? Oh, this thing is like a 1099. It says... um. IRS form 1099? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know what that's about. Well, can you tell me what it's about? Because I just don't have no clue. Oh, yeah, I can tell you exactly what it's about. Ladies and gentlemen, I explained it to her. And I realized I wasn't recording the call. So I explained it to her again after I started recording. Had the whole conversation. Recorded everything with her bewilderment of receiving a 1099A and a 1099C. Because I got an arbitration award. They never contested it. Well, they did say the contract didn't exist, but that's a decision for the arbitrator. The arbitrator said the contract did exist. Oops. So they play games. It's time for me to play. I'm ready. Coach, hey, put me in. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to carry this video on and on and on because y'all know I can talk, but I'm tired. I've been going the last three days straight, waking up at 5 o'clock Wednesday, 5 o'clock Thursday, 5 o'clock Friday. And I, I took a sleepy pill last night, but, and I, I stayed asleep. I mean, I, I got back up at 4 o'clock, 4, was it 4.30 this morning? Because I, I went to sleep at maybe 7.30 last night, 8 o'clock. So go ahead and do the math. 9 to 5 is 8 hours, 8 to 4 is 8 hours, so I had my 8 hours of somebody's sleep. But I still got up, and been up since 4 o'clock, 4.30 this morning. It's now three, going on three o'clock. I'm tired. 
I've had some long days and I got to go outside and look at the puppies because they've been outside. Temperature outside, man, that junk has been, it's been a scorcher. Okay, like they say on some of the movies as they just getting ready to begin playing. It's been a scorcher. Oh, finally, one other thing, ladies and gentlemen. Many of you have been trying to dial the number for SACOM. There is an 800 number for SACOM, but there's nobody manning those phones. Uh, in the future, someone will be manning the phones, but you guys will only be able to ask questions concerning current programs for SACOM. Now, when I say current, you won't be able to ask anything about the SAP packs. Many people have been wanting to know how to handle their tax forms. Y'all got to continue to pay attention to the videos and go back and listen to the old videos that are called SAP pack updates because that gives you little hints and clues. It's not our job. Not our job. You didn't pay us to tell you how to do this. You just paid us to help you with the process. That's why we charge less than everybody else. You can go to everybody else and have them tell you, but they won't be able to tell you everything because they didn't know everything. They were trying to copy. I'm the only one at SACOM who knows the whole process. Well, technically not anymore because I've explained it to everybody, but I'm the only one who knew what was going on. So you guys were trying to contact them and I'm telling them, no, that's not your job. So you can't call and ask for help on how to do this and how to do that okay because you can get with this or you can get with that okay you can't do it so stop it you leave messages nobody's going to return your call because you want to have a conversation we ain't got that type of staff at SACOM we got eight people and ain't got no time to be you got five corporations come on now stop it so it, it's not going to happen now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to read it again. Judge, judicial immunity, therefore, provides judges absolute immunity from suits arising from acts taken in their judicial capacity, unless the act, they acted in a clear absence of all jurisdiction. So do yourself a favor. Absence of all jurisdiction. Look up that phrase. Can somebody look up that phrase? Mama, he wants us to look up something. Can you pause the video? I, wait, hold on, mommy. I think he's going to look it up himself. Ask us to look it up, and then he looks it up himself? That's an ignorant mother. Uh, no, mommy, I wasn't going to say that word. No, I wasn't. No, I, wasn't. No, I was going to say he was an ignorant mother. That's all I was going to say. Well, the same, no, it ain't the same thing, mama. Anyway. I ain't yelling at you. You yelling at me. Sorry. The judge of a probate court who held a criminal trial who acted in clear absence of all jurisdiction over the subject matter. Judges of probate court can't handle criminal trials. Okay. So they said he didn't have jurisdiction to handle a criminal trial. Ladies and gentlemen, no court has jurisdiction to violate your rights. No one. How can a judge lose immunity? When a judge knows he lacks jurisdiction and acts in the face of clearly valid statutes expressly depriving him of jurisdiction, judicial immunity is lost. Ah, Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is where you do your research. Charge the judge criminally. And once you charge the judge criminally, hold on. You can find other judges who've done the exact same thing. Hold on! Hold on! in the same state and you can bring a lawsuit on behalf of all of those individuals called a Qui Tam Q U I T A M A Tammy Qui Tam lawsuit against that judge that's the law sorry if you can hear my voice this is stress and fatigue so I'm gonna have to stop the video because I was tired been, been burning candles, ends and ends and ends. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you, you saw what I just put in here, right? Do your research. And you don't have to literally bring a suit <laughs> on the judge. Just say, hey, wait, hold on. Wait, wait, excuse me. Where's your jurisdiction for that? Are you acting in absence of all jurisdiction? That's all you got to do is ask them. Well, then now prove that you have the jurisdiction to do this. Where is your jurisdiction? Well, the statute gives me statute. Statutes aren't law. 
What are you talking about the statute? What type of hearing is this? I thought this was supposed to be a court of law. Man, you see the, the wheels turning and the barrels spinning and whoo-wee, line them up. We're about to have ourselves a shooting corral. So, no, not talking about you guys shooting them. I'm talking about their own system going ahead and picking each one of them off because they opened their mouths. They shouldn't have done it. They shouldn't have done it. They shouldn't have done it. And they end up being reprimanded. You just want them to be right. You just want them to play fair. You just want them to, Spike Lee, do the right thing. Okay? So make them do the right thing. I'm sorry. Did you hear what I just said? Make them do the right thing. Some of you don't understand what I'm asking. So I'm trying to tell you I'm getting ready to demonstrate. Now, you don't sit back and wait for me to demonstrate. Like I said, I'm getting ready to do the same thing with the defrauded homeowners of America. I'm not no joke. We are going to be taking uh, 10 people. It's going to be $1,500 for each of those 10 people to join this suit. They will get a part of the proceeds. I will take 1%. Ladies and gentlemen, it's 20%. The other 20 to 30%, depending on how it goes, the other 19% or 24% or 29% or whatever the other 99% is will go to those 10 people. This is not something I'm going to let go. This is not something I'm going to botch. Because see, y'all are not really getting it. But if an individual gets that Quietam lawsuit file, ooh-wee! Y'all just don't know because I know several attorneys who would want to take over something like that because they want to get their point across. Oh, did you not know that the Attorney General, when doing a civil investigation, because as a Quietam attorney, you get to do an investigation, the Attorney General can hold a, hold on now, I know some of you guys are getting it. Well, what do Attorney Generals often hold? Didn't they just call up Rudy Giuliani before one? That's right, a grand who? A grand who? A grand who? A grandmaster? No, we ain't talking about that part of the Ku Klux Klan. I'm sorry. They misunderstood. They thought we were talking about the real Ku Klux Klan, you know, who used to hold those type of grand hearings. You know, so we, we ain't talking about that. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, earlier today, I came home, and Penny had dug... A hole underneath my fence and I asked her I play at it with her hey Penny don't don't be digging no holes underneath my fence I'm tired of feeling it so stop it she waits till I leave and she does it again hey hey Penny don't 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 do that I'm, I'm tired so I reposition her leash put her on a leash and now she can't get access to nothing and she I'm watching her through the camera right now and she is literally trying to figure things out, and she can't. I'm tired of Penny. Penny ain't no stupid dog. Penny's getting on my last nerve. So one day, y'all gonna hear me talking, and y'all not gonna hear me talking about Penny no more. Because hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more, no. Anyway, so I'm, I'm not gonna do like I used to do with my dogs when they got on my nerves and I couldn't handle them and, you know, I didn't want to feel like dealing with them. Taking them for that ride. Y'all know that ride. The, the same ride your father took your dogs on and your cats and all that stuff. Okay, that ride. I ain't going to take her on no ride. Okay, I'm just going to let her go one day. And let her keep going. Because I ain't got time. I don't have time. So I got to go out there and check on the pups. They um, are needy like that. And so we're going to let y'all go with the judicial issues. But ladies and gentlemen, this is to help some of you who are meeting up with judges and don't know what to say and don't know how to stand on your own two feet go over the first 10 amendments or the bill of rights for your state and anything that you see the word shall is a requirement for government not a requirement for you you see you and the rest of the people 
could not make anything mandatory for other people. You don't have that authority. You don't have the authority to rule over anyone. This is a country of the people, for the people. You have authority to rule together, but not over anyone. The laws that were set, go back and take a look. That's the Bill of Rights. All right, hey, I got to go. Y'all take